Welcome everybody back to stage one. I hope you have had a terrific day. Now, Cassie Brunetto is our next speaker and she brings some great experience in terms of IT, risk and compliance and building security programs. She's also the founder of Gate Breachers, which promotes inclusivity of underrepresented genders in our field. So her talk is going to address setting up for success when managing information security programs, something I bet a lot of us can deal with. And then she's gonna to have to do some question and answer afterwards. So please put your questions in the talk. And also just a quick word of praise and thank you to our very generous sponsors. Uh, thank you if you've explored the Expo Hall. If not, take a few moments, go say hi. And without any further ado, I will pass this over to Cassie Brunetto. Enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cassie, and my talk is Vulnerabilities from Venus, Management from Mars, How to Navigate the Unknown. Before I get started, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Cassie. My pronouns are she, her. I am the IT risk and compliance manager at Greylog and dog owner of Astro, the lovely German Shepherd you see on the right, who many of you know from Twitter. I play a key role in identifying, managing, and monitoring cybersecurity risk within my organization. I started in help desk and worked my way up, got my bachelor's degree in information security and assurance, and then got a master's degree in my second um, position in security. Um, and in 2019, I founded Gate Breachers, and we do focus on promoting inclusivity in cybersecurity, and we hope to see uh, more underrepresented genders joining the field. Shout out to everyone who's been uh, trucking through and learning more while we've been a pandemic. You're awesome. Um, and I got some certifications um, just to uh, learn. And, uh, you know, I think that everyone can learn from them, and, but not required in the field. Um, so I have the CISSP, the CISM, and the Security Plus. And you are all joining me for my first GRT talk. So thank you so much for joining me. So why do we care about building effective security programs? Well, in 2013, Yahoo suffered a security breach affecting 3 billion accounts. They were fined $85 million, and it took them three years to discover and disclose the breach, and almost four years to complete the investigation. In 2014, Home Depot credentials were stolen from a third party, which led to a compromise of the point of sale system. This resulted in a $200 million fine. Threat actors likely completed the initial breach through a third party supplier workstation. Then they surveilled the cardholder data and then tested the attack to capture and exfiltrate data. In 2016, Uber paid the criminal that hacked its driver and user accounts $100,000, which led to a $148 million fine. The chief security officer and one of his deputies were fired for their roles in concealing the attack. In 2017, Equifax lost personal and financial information of 150 million clients due to an unpatched database framework resulting in a $575 million fine. Threat actors were able to move from a consumer complaint portal to other servers because they weren't segmented from each other and they had usernames and passwords stored in plain text. This year, in 2021, the Colonial Pipeline proactively shut down its operations after a ransomware attack, resulting in fuel shortages along the East Coast. The company believes that attackers exploited a legacy virtual private network profile that did not have multi-factor authentication configured. The Colonial Pipeline also paid a $5 million ransom to the Russian-based criminal group, DarkSide. 
As you can see, it is extremely important to build an effective security program to prevent, detect, respond, and recover from cybersecurity incidents. So you've been hired to manage the information security program at a new company. How do you build a security strategy without becoming overwhelmed? How do you define the scope for security initiatives? Before we can create a security roadmap or strategy, we need to thoroughly understand the basics. So we'll wanna to talk to employees and discover more about the new company and its culture. What does the company do? You wanna talk with senior management about the current state of the organization. What product or service is being provided? What kind of data is being accessed, processed, transmitted, or stored? Do you have any information, information security or regulatory requirements that have to be met? What are the company's current initiatives? Is there a new functionality or service being implemented into a product? Does the organization plan on hiring new employees or building new teams? And what are the company's goals for the future? You, wanna, you also wanna consider scalability and cost efficiency when architecting security processes and controls. Next, you want to understand the company culture. Is there currently a managed security program? You'll wanna review policies, procedures, guidelines, and standards. You can also interview employees about currently implemented security pr practices. And is there any framework that the security program is already aligned with, such as national information uh, NIST, <laughs> NIST cybersecurity framework? And how do employees feel about the security controls in place or the lack thereof? Are security controls hindering operational effectiveness? Are the security controls aligned with the mission and vision of the organization? Are the security controls actually meeting their objectives? Is there a security awareness training program? What type of security awareness training program is provided? Is training tailored to the organization and its employees? And are metrics being used to measure the effectiveness of security awareness training program? Finally, are there documented security policies and are they disseminated to employees? Are new or updated policies communicated to employees? Is there a central repository where employees can review relevant policies? And how often are employees required to review these policies? You'll also want to understand the data classification scheme being used, if there is one. So we wanna ask ourselves, is data being classified currently? If so, what are the data classifications currently being used? Is there a standardized classification? Are the de data classifications clearly defined? Ideally, there should be an easily accessible data classification policy or standard that defines data classifications and provides clear examples. Next, you want to identify the crown jewels. What are the crown jewels? What does the company consider important to its mission, objectives, and operations? The crown jewels can be source code, intellectual property, personally identifiable information, personal health information, and other proprietary data. Who owns the crown jewels? Who is accountable for the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the crown jewels. You'll wanna interview senior management and other business unit managers to identify the information owners. Then you want to understand where the crown jewels are located. Where are the crown jewels being accessed, processed, and stored? You'll want to identify any applications, systems, and services. This information can be extremely helpful when you're creating data flow diagrams. Next, you'll wanna understand how the crown jewels are being accessed. How can I access the crown jewels? Is there multi-factor authentication required? Are there shared accounts? Which brings us to who has access to the crown jewels. 
who are the people responsible for using the crown jewels during their everyday tasks? It could be developers, engineers, sales, or marketing teams. And finally, who needs access to the crown jewels? We want to make sure that we're removing any unnecessary access. We want to also ensure that we're provisioning access according to the principle of re least privilege and ensuring that we are reviewing all privileged access. We have to remove any accounts or any access. This could include service accounts and any type of things that are standardly configured in Active Directory. You'll also want to take an inventory of the infrastructure. What does the infrastructure look like? Is there a network, a network flow diagram or a data flow diagram? Are we using Linux or Windows on servers? Are we using a cloud hosting provider? Are we using containerization or container orchestration technology such as Kubernetes? Then we want to understand the technology stack being used for the products and services being offered. Are we using Apache, MySQL, Elasticsearch? What programming languages are being used? Next, we want to identify who's managing the infrastructure. Is there an engineering team? Is there an operations team? Or is it information technology? You can also interview any employees about the current practices and processes. Third party vendor risk management. Is there actually a managed third party vendor risk management program? If yes, are there any established practices or procedures, any templates or questionnaires that are currently being used? Or are we going to build the program from scratch? If so, we wanna consider the third party vendor life cycle and the processes that we're going to develop to onboard and offboard vendors. Who are the high and critical vendors? Have they been assessed? How frequently will high and critical vendors be assessed in the future? And is the right and ability to audit controls currently included in any vendor contracts? Which vendors are being assessed? You wanna create an inventory of third party vendors, document the services that are being provided, the business unit being serviced, and any third party vendor contacts. You'll also wanna determine the assessment requirements for third party vendors. For example, cloud hosting providers must provide SOC 2 type two reports. Who are the organization's key players? It's important to identify the owner of risks. Who are the risk owners? Is it the chief technology officer, the vice president of a business line? It's important to establish and document any type of risk ownership. Next, you'll want to identify key players. Who are the information security programs stakeholders? It could be the marketing, sales, or engineering departments. Who are the subject matter experts? You'll want to identify information technology and information security subject matter experts throughout the organization. And keep in mind, they might not necessarily work in the security department. There may be employees in other departments that have security knowledge. Who do other employees trust? Is there somebody that can assist you with implementing security initiatives that other employees trust? You'll want to build relationships with these key players. It is crucial to build relationships with the key players in your organization to gain trust and credibility with other employees. Key players are the vehicle that will drive your security program. They will have insight and tribal knowledge that can be overlooked if you try to establish processes on your own and is integral to include them in important conversations and discussions. Defining the scope of your security program. First, you'll want to identify gaps. What is the current state versus what is the desired state? You can use the NIST National Institute of Standards and Technology Cybersecurity Framework implement implementation tiers. There are three tiers, partial, risk-informed, and repeatable. 
So for example, your current tier might be risk informed and your desired state would be repeatable. Then you'll want to identify risks. You can use threat modeling and perform a risk assessment. Then you wanna consider the risks presented by identified gaps. Does the risk of an ineffective security control surpass the organization's risk appetite? Then you'll want to prioritize these risks. What risks need to be mitigated based on the identified impacts? We wanna mitigate the risk with the greatest adverse impact and the likelihood of occurrence. It's important to develop realistic security program goals. And I'm going to provide you with some advice that I wish that I had when I first started creating security strategies and roadmaps. First and foremost, set yourself up for success. Develop SMART, which stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-based goals for personal development, performance, and project management. Your goals should align with the mission of the organization. For example, one of your goals could be to decrease security risk by developing a vulnerability and patch management process or increase security awareness by providing interactive security training to employees on a periodic basis. Don't be too ambitious. There may be dozens of fires to put out, but you only have so much time and energy. You'll wanna prioritize critical and high risks and develop a project plan. Do not be a jack of all trades and a master of none. There may be many opportunities for improvement in areas such as network security, application security, logical access security, or third party vendor risk management, but you should target significant gaps that have been identified during the scoping phase. Focus on one area and be exceptional. Improve one area with significant gaps. For example, if you don't currently have an identity and access management program, one of your initiatives can be focusing on standardizing roles and access and then integrating single sign-on or multi-factor authentication with critical applications and privileged user accounts. Communicate your boundaries with your manager and other teams. Don't be afraid to say no just because you think you'll disappoint your manager or your team. You want to define you and or your security team's job scope and establish open lines of communication between other teams and the information security department. Do not take on an overwhelming amount of projects. Avoid burnout and avoid stress by managing less projects. Create a project plan, including a timeline. You can create a Gantt chart or use free online tools and consider using other resources. This brings us to leveraging third parties. You can hire third parties for larger projects like incident response or disaster recovery capabilities. Third parties can also help you build in-house teams. Third parties can be more cost efficient than building capabilities in-house. You can also consider hiring consultants for short-term projects, like creating policies or hiring employees. Consider outsourcing short-term projects that require experienced subject matter experts. Consultants can also be more efficient than hiring full-time employees. Last but not least, make incremental changes throughout time instead of attempting to remediate all gaps within a short amount of time. Patience is key. It takes time to implement processes, change or build a security culture, and create key performance or risk indicators. But you want to make sure that you're documenting, tracking, and measuring and reporting all of your progress. You can easily show your impact on the organization's security posture. Don't forget to celebrate small wins. It's like a 10-mile hike. Don't focus on getting all the way to the top of the mountain. Be enthusiastic about reaching small milestones throughout your journey. Well, that was my talk on starting a security program. I can be reached on Twitter. My handle is loquaciousloca, 
And I'm also on LinkedIn. I also have included in my slides the reference for the NIST implement implementation tiers. So feel free to take a look at that uh, once I've shared my slides. Thank you. Congratulations. That Thank was you. a great talk. I <laughs> like how you walked us through the steps, but you, you just really simplified, but called out the key things. We've got some good questions from people in the chat. So I'll start with the first one. Uh, this is from Dwayne Dunstan and he wanted to know how many organizations you've consulted with and uh, where they've identified their crown jewels and that they knew where they were located. Um, I would say that the amount of organizations that had that before I was there would probably be zero, um, maybe one um, in the financial industry. But I would say that this is a process that not many people do, um, in my opinion, and um, creating an asset management program or inventory or configuration database um, is like something that I've, I've rarely seen. So getting this, um, you know, obviously you build upon asset management into vulnerability management, patch management. So it's really important uh, to know what you have before you can protect it, of course. Absolutely. Uh, we have um, another question. This is from a volunteer here, John, and he wanted to know, how do we make some of this work in a small business environment? small business environment, I would definitely recommend um, thoroughly doing your research, your, your due diligence and preparing um, any type of evidence that you can provide to whoever writes the checks. Um, and just really getting intimate with your your fellow coworkers, and you're going to be building relationships and having to work with them and just really understanding what role everyone plays in the organization um, and architecting security controls that make sense financially um, that play nice with any type of legacy um, technology, um, all of these factors you really have to take into consideration. Um, but I would definitely um, put an emphasis on the cost benefit analysis because small SMBs are going to want to go with the, the least costly um, controls or processes to implement. So you want to make sure that you have, um, you know, evidence and, and proof of a benefit and return on investment. Great point. And I love that you highlighted the importance of knowing who does what, so you know where whom to ask when things come up. That's sort of a, right. not what you know, but who you know <laughs> approach to things. For sure. Uh, we've also got a really good question from our uh, fabulous admin render man here who would like to know what's the strangest or the wildest device you've discovered on a network during an asset inventory? Um, totally like Windows XP, um, <laughs> you know, default like admin privileges, um, just really just scary, scary um, things like that and seeing people that use privileged user accounts all day for like their daily tasks, I think has been like one of my nightmares of my life. So please don't do that. <laughs> oh, real stories. Uh, I'll see if there's anything else. Um, no, I think that we are good for questions here in the chat. And again, you're going to make your slides available. We've got the links to the NIST framework, which believe me is a very helpful tool and you'll want to have that to work alongside. And this was a terrific presentation. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for being part of Diana Initiative 2021. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for Bye. attending. Bye.